how to promote your music. It's a huge endless topic. Welcome to the studio. My favorite sound, like rain always means music making time 100% and no distractions. It's so much fun. The live setup, still developing it. I can now play two songs live. Save the day, watch me burn. Both of them are working absolutely fine. Took me today four or five hours to bounce out all of the individual stems to make this actually work. If you want to know more about the live setup, check out yesterday's video. I explained it in full with the entire light show and every single component. Next up, music production. I need more songs for the live setup, more songs to be released on the label of Lost Frequencies. Watch Me Burn, Save the Day are like, Watch Me Burn is out. Save the Day will be out on the 27th of August, less than a month. And then there needs to be another follow up. So, still working on that one. Also very much done a couple of hours later here in the studio. That new track is really dope and fire. I'll play it to you in the outro. Since I didn't have any time to really film anything today, sometimes I just have to really focus on things. Let's do another edition of Q&A where you guys ask me questions and I answer them all about music making, music business kind of stuff, everything you want. First up by Ben, when did you start with music? Um, DJing, like, I think 14, 15, like buying my first vinyl, training how to mix, save up for a second turntable. Music production, maybe 16, 17, but just like trying out stuff, nothing serious, didn't even think about becoming a music producer. And then maybe my first release was 1920, kind of. Ben is asking something very, very important. Coke or Pepsi? 100% Coke. Tim is asking, oh God, no. How often do you work out to keep yourself healthy during production and stuff? <sighs> For me, it's always up and down. I have sometimes a phase where I work out almost every second day for half a year, and then I don't work out for half a year. And we're right now, at the very end of that not working out half year. So working out phase coming very soon. There is a wedding, need to get back in shape, healthy, but eating healthy, something I started two years ago and I do ever since. I don't eat any crap. I don't eat anything that is too much processed. If there is an alternative that is like less weird ingredients, I go for it. Less meat and um, a lot of like just fresh vegetables and stuff like that. Ooh, my friend Uok is asking, who's your biggest non-musical inspiration and why? <sighs> is it too cheesy to say my parents? Like, they're both artists, so I learned a lot from them. Being, like, self-employed, struggling, fighting, not giving up. Yeah, probably my parents. But there are millions of people, like, I admire, like, every person that does sport to, to like, a very high level. Every person that is, like at its best and giving everything. Like I admire people that just give 100%. And I hate, I absolutely hate laziness and stupidness. And both combined makes me just angry. Rick Son is asking, how many unfinished songs do you have that you probably would like to finish? I have like 20 songs on my hard drive that are like work in progress, like actual songs with vocals that I just need to finish and, and like pitch to a label or release on my own label. I have at least four, five, six hundred more tracks that are drafts, stuff I started, never finished, especially more of my early kind of music production phase. The longer I'm doing this, the less songs I start that I don't finish, which is really great. But this, yeah, took me a long while to learn. Many are asking, physical hard drive for backup or something like iCloud? I personally only do like physical backups. I was thinking about a cloud service, but they're kind of expensive for what they offer. And then again, if you lose all your data, you have to download it back again from the cloud, which could take days, weeks, and I don't have that time. 
If I lose my data, I need to transfer it as quick as possible. Just go to the next Apple Store, buy a new MacBook, and just put it on there within a day and work again. I know some cloud services for extra charge send you a hard drive. But that's really unnecessary, but maybe eventually in the future. I like the concept, but it's not there yet, at least for me and, and my purposes. If you get that huge room, how will you set up the studio? I don't exactly know what Infinite Music 10 is talking about. Did I mention it? Yes. Yes, I mentioned it. Okay, I know what he's talking about. As you know, I tried to get a house and studio combined with that house. Didn't work out. Now I found something new. We're actually going to check it out in person tomorrow. So definitely tune in. And they have a room in there that is uh, 140 square meters. Just one room, 140 square meters. Like that's huge. It's like, it's like, it's, it's so huge. You could turn it into the biggest, most epic recording room and studio ever. Again, we'll see tomorrow. And that place even has an alternative. Like there, there are two places where it could set up a studio, maybe even two studios, three studios. It's huge. Okay, the next one is a really, really important one that I get a ton. And I think some people just, just get it a little wrong. This question is by Clock Music, how to promote your music. It's a huge, endless topic. I would, I would say just try at the beginning. It's too tedious to promote yourself. It's so frustrating, to be honest. I don't even know how I made it. It's, it's still, still today, up to this point, it's the most annoying, frustrating task when it comes to the entire music scene. It feels like begging if you ask your friends and family to share your song, even if they do, which they won't, probably. It doesn't help a lot. You need to reach a million people on Spotify, for example, to just earn three, four thousand euros. And you need to release every month a song and have a million streams, which is almost impossible. I have only like two or three, song, three songs that reached over a million streams, which is good and great. But we're talking about the last 15 years of making music. And yeah, it's just frustrating. It's the, really, it's the most fr frustrating thing. Um, but how to actually pull it off? I would argue the best is to make music so good that a label, an external label, likes it so much they will take care of it for you. A great, good label that actually really appreciates you as an artist and your music, and that's really rare, can help you a huge long way, especially for electronic dance music, because the label, it's like it's like getting like uh, approval by, by someone good. For example, let's say you release on one of the labels of Tiesto, then everyone will like listen to that song, especially if they don't know the artist. And if they then like the song, they will push it and play it and, and appreciate it. That's probably the easiest way to get your song promoted. Make it good enough and get it on one of the bigger labels. Buy a bigger artist or just a bigger label that has the promotional power, that has the knowledge. You'll still very, very likely not make a single cent of this. But the next time you promote a song, it will be a lot easier because you build up your fan base at least a tiny bit with every release. For example, me, I'm releasing right now on Lost Frequencies label. It's helping. It's helping a lot. He played it on Tomorrowland, which is really great. Next song helps even more than another song. And just like continue steady. That's probably the key thing to promote your music effectively. But it's frustrating. You have to do it constantly and it's every single time frustrating. Putting money towards it doesn't really help. Doing ads on Instagram and stuff like that doesn't help. Buying Spotify playlist placements in private Spotify playlists is probably the best you can do. But it's right now, nowadays, since everyone figured it out, it's really not worth it anymore. You have to put like 10 times more money into it than you get out of it. So um, it's hard. Make the good music and get it in the hands of the right people. Those two and you'll win. Let's do a few more really quick. Why don't you try out a subwoofer in your studio? That's like personal preference, but <laughs> let's be honest, I got pretty huge speakers that go down to 25 Hertz. I mean, just look at these bad boys. Kind of look tiny compared to them. We got here, I think a nine inch woofer too. Plenty of bass. And usually a subwoofer can cause problems like 
putting it in the right place, choosing the right crossover frequency. It's, it's, it's usually, at least for me in my experience, it's causing more trouble than it actually helps. Wolkon is asking, wave plugins run in MacBook M Pro M1 question mark. I don't know, I deleted all of my waves plugins. Um, they had like the weirdest upgrade policy on the planet. You have to subscribe just to receive updates, like mandatory updates for new computers. That's kind of silly. And the times are over where they had anything on the market that no one else does. They're good, very good alternatives by small programmers um, that do amazing stuff. So I banned the wife stuff. Last question by it's MD3 sign. I hope that's correct. Do you use soft clippers? Yes, sometimes, but usually just regular clippers. Um, the better mecha mastering limiter has a clipper built in. That's something I sometimes use. And then by Sur Audio, I think uh, a clipper for like, I think it's just 15, 25 bucks. Really good just to catch those peaks, get some extra loudness and control like the, the dynamic of, of all of the elements in your song, squeeze everything a little, give it that modern sound. That's usually what works for me. Anyways, that's it. If you're interested in any kind of music production tutorial, I did a masterclass with Fader Pro. I'll link it down below. Tomorrow, back here in the studio, full music making, full working day, no Q&A, just the real deal here in the studio. And then also checking out that potential new house and studio.